I met an elven mage earlier. Solus, I believe he was called. I admit I was surprised. I didn't expect to find mages among the Inquisition. Tell me, why were you at the Divine Conclave? This chaos harms everyone. The war benefits no one. It must end, and order must be restored. If only the rebels saw things so clearly. Justinia's death has shattered the balance of power in Thedas. If it is not restored quickly, countless lives will be lost. Mages, Templars, innocent people of all kinds now look to the Inquisition to decide their fate. That's why you wanted to be here. To have a hand in deciding that fate. Wouldn't you? For almost a thousand years, the world believed it was in the hands of the Maker. And now many believe you are the agent of his will. Whatever the truth is, that belief gives you power. I'll use it to change things. If that's true, then I'll put it to good use. I suppose we'll see. I've stolen enough of your time, my dear. Don't let me keep you. Yes? Tell me about the Circle. I wanted to ask you about the Circle of Magi. Of course. What do you wish to know? Wasn't it disbanded? If the Circle disbanded, how can you still belong to it? The Circle is an idea, my dear. And an idea cannot be dissolved. Many of the first enchanters voted for rebellion, caring little that anything short of a unanimous decision would pit mage against mage. Rather than dissolving it, Grand Enchanter Fiona's vote split the circle in two. The rebels follow her, the loyalists follow me. Shouldn't you replace her? If you lead all the loyalists, why are you only first enchanter and not Grand Enchanter? Grand Enchanters are elected, and since there are no First Enchanters besides myself, no vote can be held. I could name myself Grand Enchanter, but the title holds no meaning now. When the circles are restored, that will change. What was circle life like? What was it like to live in a circle? My dear, your question is the root of all problems with mages. I cannot tell you. Every circle was different, their Templars were different, their politics unique. And every person within each tower had an experience of circle life unique to themselves. Some people suffered and some were content, some were cruel, some compassionate and some indifferent. The same is true of people everywhere, in all circumstances, whether they are mages or not. What about your experience? So tell me about your personal experience with the circle. I enjoyed life in the Montsimard Circle, my dear. It was an edifice devoted to knowledge and refinement. And mages need the company of other mages. No one else can truly understand the challenges we face, nor see the world as we do. Was confinement hard? You must have been under constant supervision, being forced by Templars to live in the tower. Was that hard to endure? My dear, I have a suite in the palace and a wing at my dear Duke Bastien's estate. I have never been forced to live anywhere. Most circles allowed mages to live away from the tower, either on their own or in service to the nobility. All that was required was permission from the first enchanter. Some circles were harsher in their restrictions. Kirkwall was the worst, oh, yeah. but it was the exception. Most were quite permissive, perhaps too permissive in retrospect. How did the rebellion start? How did we come to this state with the circles in revolt? A failure of perspective that infected circle leadership. Mages lived solely in a world of Templars and mages. They could not even imagine what was beyond the tower walls. Kirkwall gave the world a reason to remember its fear of magic. A mage killed hundreds with a snap of their fingers. Across Thedas, a new tangible fear of magic grew. 
Commoners and nobles alike called out to the Chantry for protection. But the malcontents in the towers thought nothing of this. They cared only for themselves and for their anger at the new Templar restrictions. When a mage attempted to assassinate Divine Justinia, again, the mages protested the investigation. The leadership chose to vote on independence based on the intolerable conditions imposed by the Templars, sparing no thought to the fact that magic was more feared in the aftermath of these attacks than it had been since Tevinter's day. So long as they had their freedom, they could care little for riots, angry mobs, or about pitting mages against each other. Were they justified? Did they have cause to rebel? In the aftermath of their terrorist attacks? Was that really the most opportune time to break away? By all means protest abuses by the Templars. Just don't do it in a way that says mages support wholesale murder. By voting when they did, my colleagues all but declared war upon the ordinary people of Thedas. A war in which we are outnumbered a hundred to one. Mages are fighting mages? I thought the fighting was only between mages and Templars. Why are mages fighting mages? The vote for independence was carried by only a small margin. But Fiona chose to let the motion stand. Those who opposed a rash declaration of war against the entire free world had little choice. By breaking from the Chantry when they did, the rebels declared themselves in support of mass murder. Anyone who did not wish to support terrorism and the slaughter of innocents was forced to take arms against the rebels. Are you familiar with Grand Enchanter Fiona? We've met. Before her horrendously ill-timed and selfish vote for independence, I thought her adequate at her job. In her dotage, she could not handle looking after the well-being of so many people. We would have done better to replace her years ago, to let her spend time gardening. Yes? I wanted to ask you about the Circle of Magi. Of course. What do you wish to know? You must have an opinion of the Templars after living so long in the Circle. Having opinions about Templars, my dear, is exactly like having opinions about mages or Navarans or men. I have known some who were impossible to endure and some who were utterly charming. I have suffered insults at the hands of those in the armor, but no more than I endured from nobles or tradesmen in Val Royaux. Personally, I have found the Templars a useful tool, skilled at keeping more unpleasant elements at bay. Yes? Tell me about yourself. I'd like to know more about you, Madame Vivienne. Whatever would you like to know. Where are you from? Your accent's not all Asian. Where exactly are you from? I am from the Circle, my dear. One's country of origin rarely matters there. But if you must know, I was born in Wycombe in the Free Marches. I was sent to the Ostwick Circle, but I transferred to Mont Simard while still an apprentice. Oh, so her origin is not too different than mine. I'm curious how a Circle Mage winds up a courtier. Nobody winds up at court, my dear. It takes a great deal of effort to arrive there. I caught the eye of Duke Bastien de Ghislaine. An advantageous connection that opened many doors. When the position of Enchanter to the Imperial Court became vacant, I was able to secure it. You're married to the Duke de Ghislaine? <laughs> of course not, my dear. Don't be ridiculous. Marriage is the business of alliance and inheritance. I'm Bastien's mistress. And what does the Duchess de Ghislaine think of this arrangement? We got along quite well. Duchess Nicoline and I used to host musical salons together. She was a great patron of the arts. She passed away from a fever a few years ago, the poor dear. What duties does a court enchanter have? I am tasked with providing assistance to the Empress on arcane matters. Most of my predecessors restricted this to lighting lamps and doing parlor tricks. In such troubled times as these, however, 
I provide political advice to Her Majesty on the subject of the Mage Rebellion. Okay, let's try the... Any chance we might... <laughs> Do you think that you and I might someday... I don't see how that benefits me in the slightest, <laughs> my dear. That's too bad. Yes? Do you think that you and I might someday... You and I? Don't be absurd, my dear. 